Get him in here! Yelling, jabbing, attacking. This is serious stuff, people. These weapons are made to kill people. They do an outstanding job at that. You know you're out of dress without that card in your pocket? This is basic training. Hardcore, in-your-face toughness training. Get on your kit. Get sitting on your kit. This week on Truth, Duty, Valor. How's this supposed to function if it's dry? It'll seize up, and then you're dead. Five recruits try to make it through Canadian Forces' basic military qualification. Some make it. Some don't. Last time on Truth, Duty, Valor. It will make me sad if there's one last person for me to yell at. Let's go! Falling over there! Two ranks, let's move! 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 In the first couple days were really rough because you really didn't know what to expect. It takes a lot of courage for someone to walk through that door. You start thinking about home, the friends you left behind, all the activities you could be doing. It was so intimidating to see all, all these other platoons marching around, you know, very disciplined and just like, oh, how am I ever going to get to being at that point? If you're not certain of your motivations, if you're not certain of your will, if you're not certain of your drive, then this is going to be horrible. Get on the wall! Get it out of your head right now! Get over it! Everybody take everything off your floors! Get beds, there are boxes, chairs, everything! Take it out! Man, just endless fun here at boot camp. They call this building the Mega home to the Canadian Forces Leadership and Recruit School, home to five recruits, all members of 25 Platoon, better known as Minarski Platoon. Private Slavinsky, 669 Infantry, 00010. Basic training is that really hot fire that you pour steel into in order to turn it into something useful. So it's, it's, it's exactly like that, because you start off with something kind of soft and useless, and then you put it through a lot of hot fire, which it probably doesn't enjoy at all, and, and then at the other end you come out something useful. So it's, they apply stress to see if you crack, they exercise you mercilessly, they keep you strictly regimented at six hours of sleep a night, um, yeah, it's, it's basically a forge. Private Pratt 302, Supply Technician 00168. Um, basic training is tiring. <laughs> Your body is sore. Um, it's just go, 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 go. It's non-stop, non-stop. Lower that yourself slowly. Good work. Private Boivet 902, Avian Tech 00135. This is something I've always wanted to do, that's always been in the back of my mind. And for whatever, wherever life took me at that time, this just wasn't in the cards for me at that time. And now, yes, I'm 42 years old, but who determines how old a person should be to make their dreams come true? Private St. Jean, 692, AVN, 00135. I'm more 
more outgoing, I suppose, and just because we get to meet everybody here, so you have to be that way. You have to be really friendly. And as I told you before, like I walk with my arms down just because I'm marching. What's up? <laughs> Private LaRose, 301 Infantry, 00010. Basic training, in a nutshell, would I'd have to explain in my own words, would have to be the beginning of a new life. Basic training is an introduction to military life. Not a job, life. Because a lot of people sometimes come in with the view that it's just a job, and unfortunately, it isn't just a job. It affects all aspects of our lives. Back from Christmas leave, Minarski platoon hits the halfway mark of basic training. Only thing is, the first half was the easy half. Where we just had the Christmas break and they've been off for three weeks, some of it's fallen down a little bit because they've been three weeks away. So it's gonna take a little extra effort on their part and on our part to get them going again. We knew that it was gonna be a little bit of a lapse backwards for us. So we went and came up with a plan to, in order, so the candidates will be successful at the end of the 13 weeks. In a nutshell, we're gonna be coming down hard and fast on them. Just to get them that wake up call to say, look, you're back here, you're no longer on city side, drinking the eggnog, eating the turkey, anything like that. You're back in the military life now. We need to cross bodies of water and how to- Back in military life, is all about venturing into uncharted waters, literally. As you know, my name is Sergeant Brass Chuck, and for the next 40 minutes, times two, we will be doing watermanship, specifically maritime crossing, how to get yourself and your equipment across a body of water. It's week six, and Minarski platoon is about to get wet, clothes, kit, and all. They call it watermanship. Watermanship for uh, for us and for the Canadian Forces uh, uh, here at the recruit school specifically is uh, to get them able to cross a body of water. If you can swim or not swim, you need to be able to get yourself, your platoon, your section, the group of people you're with across a body of water, and be able to continue your job on the other side of the body of water. You're walking along, it's been raining for days, and there's a body of water, it wasn't there before. We gotta get across it, why? The enemy's after us. Step one, recruits must pack the entire contents of their kits in waterproof bags. Stand up behind your police. Any questions? Go. Step two, fully clothed, they must completely soak themselves and their kit before entering the water. Step three, whether they can swim or not, recruits must get themselves, their kit, and their weapon across the water. Front rank, approach the water. You will do so by bringing your improvised flotation device right to where Sergeant Weave is going to place it. Pass the weapons out. Hit in water. Personnel in water. Get your weapon on your kit. Personnel, proceed. Imagine pushing over 50 pounds of dead weight through the water. Now, imagine someone shooting at you while you struggle to keep your waterlogged body afloat, your eyes open, your gun dry. This is no easy feat. This is watermanship training. Weapon out of water! Hit out of water! Out of water! Hey, it's up to the hole. 
What they did today is uh, something that I'm sure none of them or very few of them have ever done before. The uh, taking the kit that they've only recently received and utilizing it in a way that they never had thought possible before, even once receiving the kit. It doesn't look like it can do that, and there they went and did that. And uh, it's something, uh, something that shows them the kit is uh, as versatile as their imagination allows. Real world. Versatility is key to every good soldier. Teaching that soldier the versatility of his weapon is key to every good army. Good afternoon, for those who don't know me, I'm Sergeant Johnson. Welcome to the weapons training portion of your BMQ. For Monarski Platoon, today is a major milestone in basic training. They're about to get issued their C7A2 service rifles. Everyone's looking forward to having the rifles. I'm definitely looking forward to it because 17 year old with a rifle, what else can a kid dream about? I've never fired a rifle, I've never fired anything before in my life. I haven't fired, well okay, I've fired like a BB gun and a paint gun and that, that is the extent of my weapons experience and I'm really curious to see if I can actually fire one with any degree of accuracy. C7A2. This is a C7A2 service rifle with a adjustable butt. So we actually get to have our own rifle, we get to name our own rifle. It's with us at all times, but it's also at the same time a lot of work. You can't have it so many meters away from you. It has to be locked up at all times if it's not with you. And like for inspections in the morning, you have to be able to field strip it. But yeah, we get our rifles tomorrow. I've already picked out a name for mine. My, I'm going to call her Vera. Because my friends made me promise to call her Vera, I, I have strange friends. No, it kind of worries me because I've, I've never handled a weapon before and I don't know too much about it. Safety, safety, safety. You don't want to have a discharge. However, if you have a discharge here on your exercise with a blank round, and you can remember what I'm saying right now, take a look to your front, take a look to where you think that projectile would have been traveling at 920 meters per second. And if your best friend had to be there, your face, your toe, your hand, thank your lucky stars that it was a blank round and you didn't just kill someone or shoot your foot off. This is serious stuff, people. These weapons are made to kill people. They do an outstanding job at that. They can also do an outstanding job at accidentally killing people in the hands of an incompetent soldier, sailor, airman. Seen? See, Sergeant! Safety, safety, safety. Like, the rifle seemed to me to be the entire point of basic training. Apparently, I was vastly mistaken, because it seems to be more of a personal change sort of thing, where you have to get to the point where you can be entrusted with a rifle. I don't know what are you doing here! You're not one behind the other. Where's your CC bag? It's in my locker, Sergeant. Where's your locker? In, uh, down by the vest, Sergeant. Well, I expect that you'll be sweating when you get back here. Let's go. Quickly, get permission to run. Run and run! So when I say head knives up front, and you can't even freaking do that, then I anticipate you having a real problem with weapons training. How come you're not sweating there, bird? Not too bad, get in there. Master Seam in there, troop. All right here. Can you pray? Have your right hand. Alright, come on in. That's the first person in my classroom, the classroom seat. So if you got 15 students, what I want is one, two, three, four, five, twelve righties, three lefties, no spaces in between. You understand? Two metal magazines opening to the front, curve facing the same direction. You understand? When you come to attention, you're going to bring the left leg up and down smartly and bring the right leg in line with the body simultaneously. Just like that. Go! Let's go! Quick leg! Crowd in there, nice and tight. Don't be shot. This is C7A2, which is called uh, a midlife upgrade. There's some differences from the C7A1. The right side of the weapon is as you hold it. As if I hold a weapon like this, this is the right side. For today's class in particular, there's some things you must know. Without this, week six, weapons training starts with the very basics. By week eight, those basics take on a whole new meaning.
You are no longer normal civilians. You are now the Canadian Armed Forces. And that's what we're teaching you to do. Because you are the future leaders of the Canadian Armed Forces. And you have to believe in that. So when you think you're tired, dig down deep, because you're not that tired after all. Show them the drive, and they are going to be very impressed by you. So now it's time to get back to work. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Get on your weapons. Go! Let's go, Roof, right off this building. You let everyone know in this building what you are doing. What you are doing today is man that fighting. Is that understood? Yes, sir! Push up position down. Welcome to aggression training at St. Jean Garrison, better known as the fine art of bayonet fighting. If you do not put 100% into this bayonet fighting, we will see it, we will know, and we will correct you. The instructors are impressive. Uh, they can yell more loudly than any human being ought to be able to yell. They yell like bass cannons at a concert. They yell so loudly you can feel it in your chest. You not like being a team player? Yes, I do, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Start grooving it. Get down to the push-up position. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on again. Aggression. That means putting the old nice person away in the back, locking him in the dark cellar, and letting that thing in the dark cellar out so you can get through that and come home in one piece. It's so that when the time comes, when they say when the metal meets the meat, is when you need to react, not stop and think about doing something. If I'm getting you to do something, it's because you need to do it right now. Let's get moving. We need to get that mentality into people's brains to act, not react. And extend your weapon and arms fully forward. Now we're dealing with the foe that doesn't have all these technical advantages that we have who will use anything at their disposal to fight. Therefore, all of a sudden, they could be right beside you, and all of a sudden, you expect them to fight. So therefore, the bayonet comes into play. Now this, this right here is a new lovely lady in my life. This is, this is Vera. She's a, she's a seven, C7A2 assault rifle. She's, she's lovely. She's kind of cantankerous. She's a little bit worn down, but I'd never say that in front. I just said it in front of her, I'm sorry. Your body is very, very tough. It's a lot tougher than your brain. You can do it. Everyone did it just about. Hope you learned a little bit about yourself and also bayonet fighting. All right? You guys were OK. For the bayonet training, that was intense because I'm not an aggressive person and they expect you to be something you're not. If Private St. Jean thinks that was rough, wait till she sees what's in store for tomorrow. It all begins before 5 AM. The toughest part is probably the 4.55 wake-ups in the morning for PT. We did a 5K run this morning, and for the first time in my life, I vomited from physical exertion. And I think once I got here, I thought it would be a breeze for the physical fitness part, but it actually wasn't. The running is so much different. Getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning and running that far is just... It's amazing what you can do when you have um, so many people behind you and so many people running with you. It's because they give you the energy to actually push yourself to do it. Minarski Platoon will need even more energy this morning. A surprise inspection has just been called. This means last minute scrambling for the entire platoon. Well, I find the toughest part of basic training is being swiped. Just, <laughs> just like going through and uh, them coming up for inspection and that and stuff that we don't have done we get swiped for. And if you get so many swipes then you get recourse. That's the worst fear of everyone I think here, you get recourse. Being recoursed is like starting over. It can happen to anyone, anytime. Failing inspections, getting injured, anything can mean a recourse. Today, 
Minarski Platoon loses one of their own, Private Peter Hinks. Recourse back to week one after being counseled seven times over the past eight weeks, mostly for failed inspections. Grover. Unaware of their friend's fate, the recruits of Minarski platoon are just trying to make it through this surprise inspection. 12, 13, 14. I've never been yelled at so much. I, I, can't, I can't remember the last time I got yelled at before I got here. And I don't make that many mistakes. There are guys making way more mistakes, getting yelled at way more often. I can't even imagine being that. It'd be awful getting yelled at all the time. This is what we survive on! How's this supposed to function if it's dry? It'll seize up and then you're dead. I, I don't like yelling. If I have to yell, something's gone horribly wrong. It's gone too far. I should be able to issue my instructions and they should be followed. No, it's not supposed to be attached. Yes, Sergeant. If I have to yell, they're not following orders. And that is the basics of what we're trying to accomplish is for them to follow orders as simply and as clearly as possible. Shit, all the same stuff. Oh, we passed the PO for it. We don't have to do anything now to detail. We're done, we passed. We don't have to do it anymore. Roar! Kind of felt like home. <laughs> uh, I have uh, five brothers and uh, my mom's very strict with them and me. So like every morning we can't leave our rooms unless our bed's made. I was actually talking to my mom that night and I told her, it's not that bad because it's like home. Home is about to change. In the coming weeks, the 41 remaining recruits of Minarski platoon head 28 kilometers east to Farnham Garrison, the final phase of BMQ. Yeah. Oh. Up until now, it's been eight weeks of intense training, studying hard, gaining critical knowledge, developing unforeseen skills, learning valuable lessons, becoming more adept soldiers, pushing their physical limits to the max, and breaking through mental barriers they never imagined they could. consists of the magnesium frame. Oh, this down. I can put the little stuff in the smaller corner. The next three weeks at Farnham Garrison, their training intensifies as they learn survival skills that will keep them alive out in the field. That away, man. Breathe. This is where they'll put it all into practice and show their instructors just what they're made of. Week 9 at Farnham Garrison is the beginning of three weeks of field training where recruits are prepped for anything and everything that comes at them in their final week of BMQ. What goes on at Farnham, we uh, initially start in week 9 with the initial field training, give them the basic tools they need, basic patrolling, how to set up the 10-man tents, how to light stoves and properly maintain it and to troubleshoot it. Perfect. Each individual goes to their own nightmare, if you will, their own transition to going through here. Run around with a weapon on your back, with 30 pounds on your back, going from point A to point B and working together as a team, and then sleeping out overnight in a little hoochie. It's, it's a real transition for them, and it's, it's, I believe a lot of it is a mental transition. Part of that mental transition includes success or failure in the 13K march. Marker right to the end. See? See? God's not close. You don't need it. Just do it. 
The 13K march was really difficult. Uh, it's, uh, it was a lot of weight. It was a long distance. Your feet are going to kill you by the end of it. Uh, the only way really to get through it is to turn off your brain and keep up and down. Keep picking them up and putting them down. It was, it was pretty difficult. I would, didn't have as hard a time as some of the others did. Uh, I'm, I'm used to walking. So I got myself through it, but we helped some other people get through it. Some of the, the people who were having difficulties, it's, it's all about team. So you, if you see someone struggling, you try and pick up their spirits so that they have the morale, they have the willpower to get through it. Come on, stop. It's in your head, let's go. Mind over matter. Come on. Private Sabrina Pratt finds willpower isn't enough to get her through the grueling march. She has to stop. Pratt will stay on course with her platoon, but today she won't cross the 13K finish line with them. Bring your partner your size, oh, noise. Let's go, hurry up. And then the 100 meter fireman carry directly afterwards, which was a challenge. You're gonna go down this road until you see the barricade at the far side. Once you the barricade, stop! The 13K took its toll on those who finished, those who didn't, and one in particular whose journey with Minarski Platoon ends today. We were doing our rucksack march back to base from the range, and uh, I stepped in a pothole and twisted my ankle. I, told, I was told that there's an 85% chance that it's a fractured ankle. Private Cameron LaRoche won't be joining the rest of Minarski Platoon as they head into their final week of BMQ. They started in week zero, fought hard to get to week eight, lost 23 members along the way, and now 40 recruits face week 12, a week they'll never forget. Week 12 is a culmination of all their training, garrison and weeks nine and 11. It is a, uh, to see their reaction time, to put them in a realistic situation. That realistic situation means living in a tent village inside FOB Bravo, a simulated forward operating base set deep in the woods of Quebec. From here, Minarski platoon will eat, sleep, patrol, guard, and fight off attacks. They have to prepare everybody for combat. In the Canadian forces, everybody has to be interchangeable. You have to be ready for combat. So the stresses of combat are incredible compared to what we're going through now. If you crack in BMQ, then you're going to crack easily in combat. It's a big job to get these people switched around. They have to be prepared because by the time they leave us, a lot of them are going overseas very shortly and they need to have their brains wired the right way to get moving. Three sections got to move to the site of the RPG attack. It's about 600 meters northwest of here. This definitely lessons learned from Afghanistan. A lot of the instructors we have at the school now have a fair bit of experience. They're coming for, out of Afghanistan, bringing the experience to the recruits to further develop them, to get them better prepared for overseas operations. Yes, sleep deprivation is a part of it, and that's a fact of life overseas. When you're going 24 hours without sleep, when you're tired, you gotta be mentally prepared to react to these situations that will come up. Yeah, I'm just really tired. Some, one night we went off 45 minutes of sleep. So and then you're doing missions all day long and marching all day long and it's, it's tiring. But you know this is your last week, so you just wanna get it done. That's all I can think about in my head. I wanna see this, you guys cover this area, this one cover. Remember, what you the idea with the scenarios here is that uh, we take everything they've learned in the last 12 weeks and we roll it all in, all their first aid, all their patrolling techniques, all their response time that they've been pumped and pushed and prodded to do so that they act at the situation, not react, because they need to get in and move. We're the only people that go towards the trouble, not away from it, and that's what these scenarios are doing, forcing these kids to get in and get involved. Where are you, Patches? 
Are you hurt? So we need to take her position against Mio. So no balls, Mio. She's no ball. Two casualties dead, uh, Mio. I request civilian pickup for buddy. Over. I've never been in the real thing, you know, but this is like the real thing, so. You know, you're walking out on missions, you know, a good, uh, I'd estimate around uh, three click. You go on a three click march oh. under tactical conditions, and then you uh, go through a training exercise, which is uh, very well done. It's uh, you know, the blank rounds, add realism, the uh, the, P the uh, trading staff they, they have running the exercises are uh, excellent actors. Get over there, Come on. Just go, 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 go. You know, you never know what's going to happen. It's just the excitement of the moment, right? Because you can go around a corner and something could be there, and you go around another corner and you think something's going to be there, but there's nothing there. We've been through this for the last 13 weeks for this moment, and I mean, this is what we're trained for, and hopefully we, you know, although we, we've only been doing it for 13 weeks, hopefully we don't make too many mistakes, and, uh, you know, I'm, pr I'm pretty confident that we've all learned a great lesson. They're far from done. Uh, they still have another full week, all their grad parade practice and all that coming up as well. But this week is the culmination of everything they've learned. This is the big test. They've led lots of exams and practicals up to this date, but this is where they put it all together and get the job done. They can still mess up week 13. They're still being evaluated as candidates on this course. All right, Alpha, back out on the roof. As fatigue sets in, messing up becomes more and more likely. For Private Slavinsky, slipping up comes first. Slipped on the ice twice in the last two days. Uh, I got a knee brace, got some anti-inflammatories, uh, restrictions for two days, so I'll probably be doing security here around the base. His won't be the only injury to strike Monarski platoon before week 12 is out. All right, troops, we know the mission tonight. We're going out two down pilots, or so we've told. We're going to go to the scene, survey the scene, find the pilots, do first aid, and get them out of there and bring them home. Any questions before we take off? Everyone's good to go. Full canteen, lots of warm clothes. All right, any questions, make sure. Now's the time. All right, load. Fed Platoon is in charge of orchestrating all special effects and actors for each scenario in Week 12. Fed Platoon can simulate anything from enemy attacks to plane crashes, sometimes at the same time. The hardest thing is just the uh, the cold. It's really nice today though. And for some people they don't deal too well with lack of sleep. But aside from that, I, I don't know, I enjoy this so much more than being in the garrison. Uh, first couple days out here this week have been, they were a little rough. They were a little rough, but they've really taken their lessons learned and they're starting to really apply them and they're starting to come along actually rather well. I think the morale is going really high now because we know that we're almost done. This is it. This is our last kind of crappy time in the field. Most of them are doing very well. Uh, a lot of them are getting very tired, sore feet, twisted knees with the road conditions have been pretty slippery. Um, the attitude I'm getting is very, very good. They're very upbeat. They feel like they've accomplished something, and that's a big thing. Uh, there's no way I'm not graduating. <laughs> I'll push myself. Yeah, we got movement, people. Keep it on. After four days straight of disasters, gas attacks, and enemy insurgents coming at them day and night, the final exercise for Minarski Platoon looms ahead. When it'll go down is anyone's guess. 
that's just cool. Everyone starts hallucinating and seeing things, and everyone's getting a little edgy, so... Yeah, it's getting to them. I'm not gonna lie, I was going a little crazy early. But we're going home today, so... Shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> just gotta get through the last big, uh... Last big battle. Armageddon, as they're calling it right now. <laughs> Final test is camp comes under a uh, major attack and we have to defend it and then withdraw under fire from the camp to get back to safe zone. Okay, who's in charge here? I want to talk to who's in charge here. Do you want to be a hero? Okay, calm down, sir. You don't talk to my troop like that. Hey, you're talking to a general hey. right here. You respect the Westline Army. Please back up, sir. I expected you guys to be all packed up and gone this morning, but you guys are still here. This is an insult to myself and my whole military. You think I'm joking here? Hey? Okay? You think I'm afraid to die? I'm ready to die for my people. Hey? Okay? I am ready to die for my people. Nothing, sir. You guys, nothing. you guys don't move. There's the blood all over the place. I'm telling you, man. I'm sick and tired of this crap. Drop your weapon right now. Last chance. This is your last morning, sir. Jump yeah. We're here. Stand two. Stand two. Stand two. to an end as Minarski Platoon withdraws from FOB Bravo for the last time. Of our four remaining recruits, Pratt, Wavin, Slavinsky, and saint Jean, only one will march in the final parade. Tag on to the back of saint Jean. It's graduation day for Minarski Platoon, a day of nervous anticipation, relief, and memories. We're gonna start off with Private Slavinsky here, and he's gonna say very shortly something memorable or some, uh, some personal thoughts about the course. Hi. I know less than half of you, half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you, half as well as you deserve. Nice Lord of the Rings quote. Yeah, well, I'm impressed for time here. Cut me some slack. I can't believe it's over. These uh, 13 or 14 weeks went by really, really fast. <coughs> I'm gonna miss you guys, but I'm so happy that most of us are coming to board. <laughs> I think I finally learned how to pick up after myself too, so my mom will be happy. <laughs> but you guys opened your arms. You guys, you guys did everything for me. I mean, like even when I was down, you guys helped me, and I will seriously miss you guys all. You guys are like one big family to me, and no matter what happens in life, I'll always be there for you guys. You know, we've all overcome a lot of obstacles, and uh, this is probably the first obstacle we're going to have in our career, and we have many more to come. But I know you will get it done, and you will all succeed, and you'll do amazing things throughout your career. It's been an honor working with all of you. It's been a terrific time. I just want to thank the girls <laughs> for assuming the position every morning. Thank you, Jansen. It's been a blast. It's, it's been a good time. I'm going to hold my head high on parade today, knowing that uh, 40 other people that are part of my family are there with me today. Pratt, Wavin, and Slavinsky all went down week 12. Broken bones and wrenched knees. They will graduate, but on this day, which should have been their day, they won't be joining Minarski platoon in their final parade. I didn't think it would bother me that much not doing the parade, but uh, it does. Today I'm, I'm really happy to be graduating. I'm disappointed that I don't get to be on parade. I'm disappointed that I'm going to be sitting on the sidelines watching my people, but it's good that they're graduating. I'm thrilled for them. I really hope they have a great parade. 
It's, it's interesting because I've never met so many different types of people, but it's really cool. We've all bonded and definitely going to stay in touch with everyone. I think that when we say we are like family, I don't think those are just words. I honestly believe when I look into these kids' eyes and I know what I feel in my heart, that uh, I will keep a bond with these kids for many years to come, and I'm sure that they will keep a bond with me. Yeah, everybody's off to training. We're, there's uh, three of us going to Meaford. There are a lot of people going to Gagetown and Borden. The Navy guys are going to Esquamo in BC. So we're all kind of scattering into little groups going throughout the various military bases in Canada for further training. And uh, I have no idea when we'll see each other again, which is kind of sad, but we're moving on in our careers, which is happy. So like most things in life, there's up, there's down. Um, I'm almost positive I'm going to Borden for at least a year and a half for a trades training. Um, I really don't know after that, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm going in as a supply technician. Um, there's been rumors that we're going to Shiloh, Manitoba to do SQ. But um, hopefully I'll be going to Borden for six weeks to finish my course and I'm hopefully be posted with my husband in Petawawa. I've signed up for infantry, so the possibility of me going abroad on a combat, combat tour is, I'd say, about 100%. I'll go and I'll do my trades training and uh, from there I really don't know. It's one step at a time, so only uh, get the information as I need to know it. <laughs> you know? It's a pride. It's a thing that they've achieved this and they can hold their heads up high. They're in uniform and they should be proud of who they are and the country that they're serving. And you know what? They will. And when you see them march, when you can see them, young kids come across that parade square, you'll see the pride on each and every one of their faces. You know? I just wish that I could be there with them, but my heart's there. Unfortunately, my legs won't I wanted to serve my country. My grandfather told me when I was a little boy that, that I am native, but never forget that you are Canadian. Never ever forget that. As we walked out to the back of the church, I saw a small sign in the back of the church, and there was 12 names on that little sign. And it was the people from my reservation who gave their lives during World War II. And it was like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I really like that, being part of something greater than yourself. And for years before I even got into the military, just, I knew what I wanted to do. We're going to relax today, aren't we? And we're going to enjoy ourselves because today we are a graduate. Okay, so make me proud out there. Just do as I ask you to do, remember? And you're going to have a lot of fun. And it's going to come together. Okay, so congratulations. I am definitely going to be watching you. Basic training is kind of a sacrifice. You come here wanting to become part of something bigger than yourself. You come here with an idea. Sometimes those ideas can be shattered and it's not quite what you thought it would be or it's a lot harder than you thought it would actually be. Many apply for the voyage. Few are selected and fewer make it you should be justifiably proud. By bettering myself, I feel that I'm more capable to do other things, to help the community, to help the country, to help other countries, to help the world as a whole, as grandiose as that sounds. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm more capable of doing my small part to help everyone. What I wish you is that you be ready to identify and meet the opportunities, meet the challenges, that surely await you in your military careers. It's made me uh, very confident in a lot of ways. It's also made me a little insecure in some ways. Um, before I came to BMQ, I was a very strong-minded person. If somebody would have told me a year ago that I would have achieved a lot of things and tried as many new things as I have since I've been here in St. Jean, I probably would have laughed at them. I've uh, jumped down a 35-foot uh, Rappel Tower, I've uh, gone in a swimming pool with a big rucksack on my back, done a 13K with a rucksack on my back, and uh, I couldn't imagine doing that before, and, and now I know that uh, anything that comes my way, I know I can conquer it. Uh, basic training is, is definitely a reward. Uh, 
uh, it opens doors to a career that many, many people have come through here, tried to get, and have been able to do it. What you gonna do? Hey!